You're watching Tag TV. From Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India is a spellbinding mosaic of culture, tradition, languages and an extraordinary mingling civilization. Keeping its age-old culture maintained, today the country is taking huge strides in the path of development. Hello, I'm your host Uzma Jafri and today in our episode of My India, we bring you some of the stories that will give you a glimpse of our country's diversity. India is a country of dynamic culture and every Indian celebrates colourful Indian festivals wholeheartedly throughout the year. Paying their homage to Ganga, the most sacred river of Hindus, the festival of Ganga Saptami was recently celebrated in the northern region of the country with religious power and zeal. Take a look. Festivals in India are all about rituals and traditions that revolve around religion and faith. Recently, thousands of devotees celebrated the festival of Ganga Saptami as a symbol of paying homage to Ganga, the most sacred river of Hindus. Devotees took a dip in the river Ganges in a VR of in India's spiritual capital Varanasi. Devotees took a holy bath in a sacred river and worshipped Goddess Ganga as they wished for the prosperity and welfare of humankind. In a Jain city of Madhya Pradesh, devotees organized a yag or a grand prayer to offer their prayers to Ganga as well as Chitragupt, the Hindu god of keeping records of human deeds. The festival commemorates the descent of river on earth, which is revered as a goddess according to Hindu beliefs. As per the Hindu calendar, the festival is celebrated on the seventh day of Shukla Paksh in the month of Vaisak. Hindus believe that taking a dip in the holy river, all the sins of human are washed off. Almost all Hindu rituals require water of a holy Ganges as it curves negativity and purifies the body as well as the soul. A hallmark of India is its diversity. People from different religious and cultural backgrounds live here amicably. Upholding this tradition of unity in diversity, a government school in the city of Surat is imparting the teachings of the holy books and scriptures to children irrespective of their caste and religion in order to make them better individuals. Have a look. Situated in the city of Surat, the government school of Jakarta village stands out among others. Its teachings are breaking the regulation of schools who teach the usual science and math. Students of various castes, creed and religions are being taught ancient scriptures and texts like Gita and Quran in order to inculcate traditional values and bring them closer to their culture. Irrespective of any discrimination, languages like Urdu and more are taught to all the students to unite them by a common court of knowledge and brotherhood. We Hindu dharma and all dharma and we live in the Bhagavad Gita and Hindu and Muslim we dharma and we school in school dharma पढ़ाई जाती है भगवान गीता कुरान शरीफ और संविधान भी पढ़ाया जाता है आपस में संबंध बनाने की चीजें भाईचारा बना रहे किसी को कोई धर्म का नहीं मानना एक इंसान मानना है 
What makes these students unique apart from their high intelligence quotient is that each one of them is well versed with the shlokas of Gita whether he is a follower of Hinduism Islam Christianity or any other religion The students are taught to respect their elders and follow good habits like taking a balanced diet and serving water to parents before drinking it Thoughts like these are from Gita and other holy scriptures and followed by all the children of various religions. These children together prove that beauty and strength of our country lie in its differences rather than its similarities. यहां हिंदू और मुस्लिम समाज के लोग रहते हैं और यहां ऐसा गांव है कि यहां भाईचारा बहुत है एक दूसरे को मिलजुल कर रहना है एक दूसरे के साथ साथ में खाना है एक दूसरे के घर जाना है और हमारी स्कूल जो है यहाँ पे भी हमें संविधान भी पढ़ाते हैं हिंदू बच्चे हैं तो भगवत गीता भी पढ़ाते हैं मुस्लिम बच्चे हैं तो कुरान शरीफ भी पढ़ाया जाता है जिसका मेन मतलब ये है सर कि ये एजुकेशन तो कहीं से भी ले लेगा बच्चा लेकिन संस्कार बहुत जरूरी है और भाईचारा बहुत जरूरी है Such examples of peaceful coexistence and unity among the various communities of our nation strengthen the secular bond of our country along with propagating a great message of communal harmony. Now a round up of some of the major stories that made news recently. A 3-day exhibition showcasing electric vehicles began in India's southern Bengaluru city. EV Expo 2022 organized by Karnataka Electric Vehicles Manufacturers and Dealers Association saw many auto lovers and enthusiasts turning up to see new electric vehicles and gain knowledge about them. Our presence here is mere extension of what we are achieving to do in terms of our brand presence. We want to be as close to the people as possible. Ours is an experiential product as you would have probably shot before. We want people to come and touch and feel what a pure made in India product looks like. The exhibition in which around 100 firms of manufacturers and dealers are participating showcased bicycles, scooters, bikes among other vehicles. The exhibition aimed at improving mobility and promoting clean technology by giving a stage to electric vehicles. The government has been pushing automakers to switch to EVs to clean the air and reduce costly oil imports. Bollywood actress Nusrat Barucha along with cast and crew of upcoming social comedy drama film Janhit Mein Jari launched the film's trailer in India's western Mumbai city. Jo baat Raj ki writing itni simple tarike se bol deti hai ek ek line mein ek matlab hum haste hain but jab aap haste ho na to aap cheezon ko aur aasani se accept kar sakte ho. So I feel a big idea and a big thought अगर आप हंस के एक्सेप्ट कर सको तो मे बी यूल चेंज दैट अबाउट योर सेल्फ इन लाइफ तो आई थिंक दैट्स वन बिग थिंग वाई अगर एक दूसरी सोच के या एल्डर लोग भी आए फिल्म देखने तो उससे जुड़ जाएंगे उस ह्यूमर से उस इमोशन से जुड़ जाएंगे और शायद कहीं खुद से उनकी सोच बदले बरोडम सेल्स वुमेन अलॉन्ग विद एक्टर्स अनुज सिंह ढाका परितोष त्रिपाठी राज शांडिल्य एंड अदर्स अटेंड इट दी इवेंट The film revolves around Barucha trying to fight society and work as a saleswoman selling condoms to earn a living. New Delhi based auto rickshaw driver Mahendra Kumar has invented an inimitable way to battle the scorching heat and offer his customers a refreshing riding experience. 48 year old Kumar is hard to miss on the city roads driving his three wheeled vehicle with a mini garden growing atop. हमने सोचा कि गर्मियों की वजह से अब ठंडक मिलेगा तो इस वजह से मैंने पौधा लगाया इसके ऊपर अब लोगों को बहुत अच्छा लगने लग गया दिखने में कि भाई बहुत अच्छा लगा बहुत वेरी गुड लोग दिन भर फोटो खींचते रहते हैं हमारे वीडियो बनाते रहते हैं हमारे बहुत बिल्कुल ठंडा रहता है एकदम से पूरा ऑटो ठंडा रहता है और ऊपर से कूलर भी लगा रखे हैं इसके अंदर सवारियों के लिए लगा रखे हैं हमारे अपने भी लिए बिल्कुल ठंडा रहता है अभी का तापमान देखिए और गाड़ी में बैठ के देखिए कितना ठंडा रहता है Apart from the plants Kumar has also installed fans inside his vehicle to give passengers a comfortable ride amid the high temperatures. Kumar's riders are appreciating his efforts and even taking selfies with aim to encourage his initiative. Like many other places in northern India, 
the national capital witnessed a very short spring and a sudden and punishing summer this year. India is a country of multi-ethnic culture where people belonging to different religions, racial, cultural and lingual identities live together harmoniously. Examples of this peaceful coexistence could be easily spotted in different nooks and corners of the country. Recently, a Hindu carpenter along with his fellow carpenters adorned a mosque in Mangaluru city of Karnataka as a symbol of religious brotherhood between the communities. It is quite common to see people of different religious communities contributing to each other's celebrations and events as a mark of brotherhood amongst them. An example of this peaceful coexistence was recently seen in Mangaluru city of Karnataka where a team of Hindu carpenter renovated the wooden carving on a mosque. Hari Shachar along with his fellow carpenters introduced the Indo-Islamic style of wooden carvings at the Badriya Jumma Masjid in the district. Now, uh, first Masjid is Majuru Badriya Jumma Masjid. Aliyadu yella kelsa kare gala nila nodi. Namge Iliadu pakshi kare yadu masidi ani mana madi purbe kante yili. Aderi itna u Ili kelsa man nila start madi on Ili ke mur vorsha ite. Andre yarad vorsha namge koran yella bandu tumba problem aiki sab pe kelsa niu tide. Iga opening aiki bandu muru ora dar gaya gide ni. Andre Kerala da, ye pi ustad dera baru, ye la kelasa karya kelan nu bici sih, baru tumbuh kushi agi, alli adu kuda masih dia adu kelasa karya nirmis kurbe kan tawar kuda. A team of eight Hindu carpenters and assistants spent around 14 months on the project. The Badri Jumma Masjid is located in the Pakshikhere area on the outskirts of Mangaluru city. The revamp was taken up at an estimated cost of around 1.5 crores. This work and gesture of the authorities of the mosque as well as the carpenters was appreciated by locals as well as religious leaders. <laughs> It is due to examples like these that India stands an undefeatable example of how beauty exists in standing together despite all differences and disparities. Pothi Chitra is an ancient art form where an artist engraves a manuscript or a mythology story on a single palm leaf which can be preserved for hundreds of years. Today we will take you to meet a small villager in Odisha who has been practicing and preserving this ancient art for years. Owing to its rich heritage, India art and craft forms are renowned all over the world. They are usually being deeply rooted to the culture and varied religious aspects of that are present in the country. Some of these forms of crafts are as old as 3500 BC and include aesthetic masterpieces like paintings, scriptures, sculptures and writings. One such ancient form of art is Pothi Chitra, where artists engrave a manuscript or mythology story on a single palm leaf that can be preserved for hundreds of years. Maga Nayak is one of the few Pothi Chitra artists in Orissa as well as India who has been preserving the art form along with teaching to with others as well. He is often visited by customers and tourists who are awestruck by his work. Here I found that there is also a painting on the palm tree and I have seen how many ways they have done carving engraving की है पूरा उन्होंने प्रशांत जी ने पूरा दिखाया करके बहुत अच्छा लगा बहुत सुंदर है सारा काम बहुत सुंदर है यहाँ पे तस्वीर सिल्क पर भी है 
Nayak, a 75 year old artist, resides in the small village of Nayak Patna in Odisha and has dedicated his life in preserving this 900 year old art form. He spends more than 8 hours on a daily basis to create masterpieces of this traditional art which he has learned from his forefathers at the age of 12. Many Pothi Chitras that are 5 to 700 years old are kept safely in his thatched house. His son Prashant has learned from his father and contributes towards preservation of this art as well. हमारा देश का गर्व है हमारा देश का ही है हम लोग चाहते हैं उसको प्रिजर्व करने से हमारा देश का मान बढ़ेगा देश आगे जाएगा ये सब हमारा हिंदुस्तान में ऐसा ऐसा जगह है जहां अपने अपने ट्रेडिशन बहुत पुराना कल्चर पुराना ट्रेडिशन जिंदा है इसीलिए हम उसको प्रिजर्व कर रखे हैं ये आगे के टाइम में नहीं मिलेगा नायक इंग्रेव दी स्क्रिप्चर्स ऑन पाम लीव्स व्हिच आर प्रिजर्व बाय फॉलोइंग ओल्ड एंसेस्ट्रल प्रोसेस for nearly six weeks, the leaves are tied together and kept aside for drying. The leaves are then boiled for two to three hours in a mixture of water and paste made from turmeric and neem leaves. This makes the leaves antibacterial and damage proof. This increases their shelf life by 500 to 700 years or more. The newly matured leaves are once again kept for drying and then sewn together to form a scroll. To make double layers, two scrolls are stretched together. Earlier, texts on the Pothi mostly included stories of Ramayana, Mahabharat, Kanchi Abhyan, Kunlis, horoscopes, shloks and chants. But nowadays, people are coming up with orders to prepare Pothi Chitra with inscriptions of Jesus, Pope, Buddha, Jain and Kalma from Quran. And in the end, we bring you a few short stories about the recent developments and happenings from around the world in our section of World in Focus. At an exhibition of industrial robots held in Tokyo, Kawasaki Heavy Industries is attracting attention by developing it as a future robot that works like a human being. Kawasaki 安全安心に元社会のエリアでですね、メディカロイドによる手術支援ロボットというものを開発してまいりまして、現在ですね、既に150床例ほどの手術を行っているという状態でございます。コロナ禍における Kawasaki Heavy Industries is developing a system that remotely controls factory robot. Kawasaki's robot technology aims to coexist robot and human being. Men beating drums and blowing ox horns sounded the arrival of the king of Ivory Coast's Abor people who waved as hundreds of onlookers lined the roadside and sat on the roofs of buildings to catch a glimpse. Wearing a gold crown and a long patterned robe, the king was taking part in a parade at the Popo Carnival, a cultural festival held every year which organizers say attracts more than a million people over two weeks. And so, our dream is that one day, the event already draws some visitors from Europe and the United States and some locals hope it could get even bigger. 
Opo means mask in the Abo language. The carnival includes a football match, a beauty contest and theatrical performances, all culminating in a grand parade. Along with the king and his entourage, the procession includes brass bands, masked dance troops, colorfully decorated floats, groups of young men disguised as women and groups of young mothers. The world's first permanent NFT art museum has opened in Seattle, aiming to pull back the curtain on blockchain-based digital art. Non-fungible tokens NFTs are type of digital asset that has exploded in popularity recently, with NFT artworks selling for millions of dollars. The museum opened its doors on January 14 and has been providing an outlet for artists, creators and collectors to display their NFTs in a physical setting while aiming to educate the public about this fairly new market for digital art. An NFT is really just a contract that signifies the ownership of, a, of an asset of some kind. It's getting used a lot for digital art because there hasn't been a place for storing that ownership for digital art in a way that was accepted across a wide range of people. And so, yeah, these tokens or non-fungible tokens are basically a, a contract or a smart contract is what we call it on the blockchain that says this serial number belongs to this piece of art. And if you own this token, you are the rightful owner. Local generative digital artist Maxim Sergai attended the opening of the museum's Climate Conversation exhibition on April 16. His vector field designs that are sold as NFTs online but can also be printed in physical form by robotic printers are seen front and center in the current exhibition. The museum has programming planned throughout the year with plans to continue down the path of education and conversation and take on important topics. Their preceding show, Pioneering Women, showcased early female NFT artists in this sphere of the art world. While many are still wondering what NFT art actually is, how to create it and how to collect it, the Seattle NFT Museum will keep educating visitors entering its doors. Histra, a consortium of several Japanese companies, is working on a pilot hydrogen supply chain demonstration project in Australia and Japan, starting in 2021. Histra, which was established in 2016, focuses on lignite coal, buried as an unused resource in Australia, and developed technology. Several companies are responsible for their specialized field and Iwatani Corporation, which is one of them, is responsible for the basic operation and management of cargo handling operation. Lignite coal, a low-grade coal, includes high water content and impurities. Because of low calorific value for heaviness, it can spontaneously combust when it is exposed to air. So it has the defect which is unsuitable for transportation and storage. However, Histra has succeeded in producing a large amount of hydrogen at low cost by making full use of technology. ま、あの、Histra developed the liquid hydrogen carrier Suiso Frontier equipped with a cryogenic pressure storage cargo containment system that maintains temperature of minus 253 degrees Celsius. So it can transport large volumes of hydrogen efficiently and safely. Histra is aiming for hydrogen society in which hydrogen is used as commonly as oil and natural gas. It will contribute to realize green society. 
that's all we have for you this week. Your comments and suggestions are important to us. Do give us your feedback at myindia at anin.com. I'm your host Uzma Jafri and it's goodbye from the entire production team.